Welcome. We would like now to redo the problem from the last video, that is, trying to find the area of a portion of a circle above a chord. Shown here, it would be that uh, blue shaded region, which is technically also known as a circular segment. So we're going to try and find the circular segment, but this time we will not use calculus, but rather some trigonometric and geometric ideas that we know. And we'll see that it's, it's going to go a lot easier uh, using some basic trig and geometry. All right, um, then to start us off, I will remind us of some of the symbols that we were using, and I'll introduce a couple new ones that we weren't using. But basically, we have a chord at a height h. Okay, so this is h from the last time. And uh, our circle has a radius r, so let me go ahead and draw that in. Okay, um, so this is r, and that's r, and the angle that we were using in the last video was theta and this is theta and as I like to do whenever I have um, uh, complementary angles one of which is theta I'll call the other alpha okay so we'll call this our alpha angle and by symmetry then this is also alpha and then this is also theta okay and um, so the technique and by the way I've written off on the side here that um, al alpha and theta are complementary angles. That means that alpha plus theta is equal to pi over 2 radians, okay? Or alpha plus theta is 90 degrees. Okay, now, um, so the idea that we're going to use to find this, let me give you a little drawing of what I'm trying to do here. We're trying to find this, which is our um, a sub c as we called it in the last video and we're going to show that a sub c can be found this is equal to the kind of like the ice cream cone which we will call the area of the sector okay so that's the sector minus the area of this isosceles triangle So if I take away the isosceles triangle from the sector, I'm going to then have the area of above the, the circular segment or the area of the portion of the circle above the chord, which we're calling A sub C. Now, it is, uh, it is easy to find the area of the sector and the area of the isosceles triangle. And so using that information, we'll be able to do a simple subtraction to get what we're really after. Okay, so let's um, go step by step then. Let's find the area of the sector. So the area of the sector um, this is can be found and the way to remember this is if you know what the area of a circle is, so let me do a small aside on the on over here. So aside. The area of a circle you probably know that is a is equal to pi times r squared. Well, I'm going to write this this way. I'm going to write it as um, one half times two pi times r squared. And the reason why I'm doing it that way is because really what you're doing is you're taking the included angle and you're having it, and then you're multiplying by the square of the radial dimension. That's really what you're doing to find the area of the circle. So it stands to reason then that the area of the sector is going to be found the same way. It's one half, the included angle in this case would be, uh, let me draw it over here in red, the included angle here is two alpha. Okay, so it's going to be 
one half of that included angle is going to be 2 alpha times the radial dimension, let me put that here as well, squared. Okay. So it'll be, when you do all of this, you'll just find that it's alpha times r squared. And that's, that's all that there is to that one. Now, um, for the, the isosceles triangle one, so area of isosceles triangle, we would need to know what this dimension is right here. And that's not a problem because we have here, let me draw it up here, we have um, a right triangle. This leg of the triangle is H. The hypotenuse is the radial dimension R. And so this other leg of the right triangle here is then going to be by the Pythagorean's theorem, it's going to be r squared minus h squared. And so really, let me come back to the little drawing we have over here. This base of the triangle, this isosceles triangle, is going to be two of those. So really I've got two of these r squared minus h squared. And the height of this obviously is h. Okay, so you can see then that it's going to be the area of any triangle is one half the base times the height. So it's going to be one half the base. We have two times r squared minus h squared times the height is h. So if I were to clean that up, it's going to be the two divided by the other two from the one half here is uh, one. So we get uh, simply h times radical r squared minus h squared. And now we're almost there because all I have to really do is subtract the two. So therefore, a sub, what I'm calling a sub c for the circular segment is going to be a s minus a t. And that's going to be um, alpha r squared minus h times R, the radical r squared minus h squared. Now, um, this is this is all good. So, if you wanted to know how to do that, and you had been given that angle alpha, and you know the uh, height h and the radial dimension, by all means, you can use this formula, and you can find a sub c. This looks a little different than the formula we developed in the last video. So now let me show why there's that difference, but in fact it's one and the same. Let's uh, show how it is in fact the same. Uh, recall that alpha is equal to pi over 2 minus theta. Okay? That, that is to say that um, uh, alpha and theta are complementary angles as we said at the beginning. So we, we made this statement at the very beginning of the video and now I can write alpha as pi over 2 minus theta. And uh, so if I stick that in, if I stick this result in for alpha, then I can show that um, a sub c is equal to pi over 2 minus theta times r squared minus h times radical r squared minus h squared. And so I find that uh, we get pi r squared over 2, if I distribute that r squared in, minus theta times r squared minus h times radical r squared minus h squared. And now the question is, well, what is theta? And uh, here we do a little tri trig, and we see what theta is. Um, here is theta. Here is h. 
and here is the r and so we can say that sine of theta is h over r it's the opposite over hypotenuse and so theta is really the arc sine of h over r and that's what I'm going to stick in for that result and so therefore a sub c is equal to a sub c is equal to pi r squared over 2 minus r squared times arc sine of h over r minus h times radical r squared minus h squared. And this is in fact the very same thing that we showed in the last video using um, some techniques from calculus. Okay, so I will stop here. Um, there are different ways you could uh, you could actually use a double angle formula to uh, show the appearance of the formula to be slightly different and you can do different uh, things. I won't go into all of those details. I'll let that uh, be something you look at on your own. But um, I wanted to show that we can actually achieve this very same result that we had shown uh, where we labored for about a half hour to come up with that result using calculus, uh, doing it much, much more simply, just going based on some trig and some basic geometry where we subtract the area of the sector and uh, subtract the area of the isosceles triangle from the area of the sector, I should say, in order to get the area of the portion of the circle above the chord, which is the circular segment. Okay, thank you for watching and we will see you in a, another video.